Okay, Mr. Ramya, am I visible to you and audible also? Yeah, 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 yeah. You are visible and you are audible. Okay. So we'll start. Before we start, let me introduce myself to you. My name is Mrs. Ayushi Jiyal, and I am from Interview Preparing and Training Team. So I will be conducting your interview for today. Fine. Your mock okay. interview. Okay. Yeah. So let's start. Could you please introduce yourself to me? Yeah. Good afternoon. Thank you for asking me this question. To introduce myself, I am Yamma Ramya. I am from Perambur, Chennai. I am an MA graduate with 86% aggregate. And I have uh, two years of teaching experience as an assistant professor in Saranathan College of Engineering. Now I am a homemaker and a responsible mom of two kids. My passion is teaching. Teachers are the sculptors of young mind. They are not only teach the subject, but also inculcate the values to the students and also make a gateway for them to, create, to be creative and make them uh, understand their unique skills and talents. As a mother, I want my kids to be creative and a socially responsible kids. I believe I'm one among them. My strengths are, I am a good listener, dedicated and a confident person. My hobbies are saving, gardening and solving Sudoku. Thank you again for this wonderful opportunity. Okay. So uh, do you know something about Baijus? Who is the owner and founder of Baijus? Sorry, I don't know about anything about Baiju. Baijus. I'm not uh, preparing. To the no, I'm not uh, trying to you are not no, trying no. for Baijus? No, no, no. I'm not applying for Baijus. I'm just uh, playing in uh, schools now, offline schools, regular schools. I'm just uh, attending the session for the interview practice. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, particularly, you're not applying for Baijus, right? No, no, not applying. Okay, fine. Anyways, so what you have to do is you have to talk about your strength, which you possess and which will help you in inculcating certain values among the students. So, could you please okay. brief me with some of the strength? Yeah, as I said earlier, I am a good listener. I think listening capacity is a one main capacity which needed in a teacher who, who have to listen to the children, children needs and their capabilities. We have to listen it first from them. From their point of view, we have to listen it. So I think the good listening skill is a main thing which needed in a um, teacher. And teacher who is said to be a patient one. So she has to be a very patient who has to listen to the children's children needs and their uh, strength, we have to understand their strength. And I am, as I said, I am a dedicated and a confident person. If I, if I am being a confident in my subject, then only I can teach them uh, in their uh, understandable way. So I think I will be capable of uh, make them to understand the subject in an easy way. Even though uh, usually the teachers teach to the teach in the class, the bright students can easily understand everything. But there are some dull students in the class, especially in the max. The max subjects, most of them, not most of them, so some of the students may find it difficult to understand the max subject. So I and my capability is to, those who are finding it difficult, I will understand that, um, sorry, I will uh, find that uh, children and then I will give the special uh, coaching to them in their position and then I will, I will ask them which uh, which way is easy for you to understand? I will talk to them and I will make them to understand the subject in an easier way. I think that is the quality which is the main advantage in teaching position. And okay, one I'm more thing, as I am a mother, as I am a mother, I want my kid to, to be not only uh, children nowadays, not only to be uh, uh, knowledgeable in subject, they also should have a uh, moral values. So I, in my class, I teach moral values, how to they how they to have to be disciplined in the class how to be in uh, they have to be in the class i will teach those things also so these are also the main uh, thing needed in a teacher i believe that these are the things needed in a teacher if i would give you a situation how would you deal with some creepy students in the class see uh, all the students their mind is their mind is not accurate right some of the students will be below average as well right their intelligent question so how will you deal with creepy students who are not ready yeah. no matter Whatever therapy you provide, no matter how you inculcate values in them, they are not ready to listen. There are some kind of students in one or two classes, right? Just in case you meet through those students, how will you deal with them? Every Each and every student is a unique student. Not all, all the students in the class follow the rules. Uh, if, if we set a type of rules, not all the students want to follow it. Every student need a, need a unique approach. So I will identify the students and I will communicate with them. 
what are all the things you need what are all the difficulties you face in the class why are you doing in such a way i will communicate with them and i will try to be friendly with them not to be a strict teacher and asking questions oh, what are you doing why are you doing this i am not using that approach i will make them to be friendly i will uh, how are you why are you da i will make my slang in a friendly way and then get a communication with them after that i uh, if i get uh, any uh, problem i will try to uh, solve it with this ch- uh, child or else i will contact uh, their parents and then i will get a senior person's help and then try to solve the problem yeah see if you are having such kind of see right now you are teaching college students right uh, before 10 years not now right now you are a homemaker right so yeah, thing is yes. see if if you come across if the hr ask you any question regarding creepy students so creepy students is not ready to listen at any cost so if say ma'am if there is a facility of a counselor i would mind make sure that the, i take the child to the counselor and the counselor needs to know the case study of the child because you know in our class we have different sorts of student so just talk about the counselor and the case study because counselor knows the nerve of creepy student right you are a teacher you are good at the you have the teaching aids and teaching methods which you will apply during your teaching but there are certain students who are beyond your imagination whatever therapy you provide whatever teaching aids you uh, give them they are never ready to listen why because their mind is not present at that point of time Yeah. Okay. So in that case, ma'am, if there is any facility of a counselor, I'll make sure that I'm there with the counselor, and the counselor is ready to take down the case study of the student. Second, if it is important to know to know the family history, because in counseling it is also important to know the family history of the child, right? So say we could also take help of the parent, but I'll make sure that I get into the nerve of the problem and to take the child how, uh, out of the problem, because a teacher's uh work is not only to teach but also to make sure to provide a helping hand to the child at any cost so i'll make sure i do that as well okay. right see your interview is going really well what you have to do is you have to focus on the solution right if you are speaking to the hr no so just make sure that you are not speaking to the child right now you are in touch with the hr so your answer has to be short and precise right so make sure that you speak short and precise answer so that it's impactful if you will speak a lot no that will not put an impact on the hr but if you will speak less and accurate answers that will have a tremendous effect on the hr as well okay now your second round is could you please explain me any topic in mathematics for 5 to 7 minutes yeah shall i note use my notebook right okay yeah you can do that if you have any if you have a blackboard or any sort of bulletin board you can use that also and if if it's not available you can mention your notebook yes it's available but lighting is not uh, okay that's why i'm yeah, using because, because uh, in your actual interview if the ma- if any teacher they ask you uh, i think you will appear for offline interview or online interview offline offline i'll oh, okay. okay. yeah then you can teach okay yeah explain okay Uh, good afternoon uh, kids hope you all doing good today we are going to see max subject yeah max is not a boring subject it's a interesting subject okay keep a smile on your face then only it will go into your mind beyond it okay today we are going to see about 3d figures or 3d solid shapes in grade 7 itself you have grown through about the 2d shapes okay 2d shapes So what is a 2d shapes there are two dimensional shapes you have already come across that what are the 2d shapes a rectangle square triangle these are the 2d shapes in that we have calculated area perimeter of the triangle rectangle and square what is area that is a total surface occupied by the object okay where it is used the area is used for example if you take a rectangular sheet if you want a rectangle if you want to paint the rectangular sheet you have to calculate the area if you want to fence the uh, rectangular land you have to calculate the perimeter in such way we have calculated area and perimeter now we are going to see about the 3d figures what are the difference between 2d and 3d 2d is nothing but two dimensional which means they contain they contains only length and breadth whereas in 3d we have included a third dimension which is nothing but the width that is length breadth and width of the Uh, object okay when we include the width then it is a three dimensional figure in what are the examples of three dimensional we are in a day to day life we are seeing lots of three dimensional figures for example cube cuboid cone sphere these are all comes under three dimensional figures 
now we are going to see about a special case called cuboid what is a cuboid if we take a rectangle and include a breadth in it or sorry within it then it becomes a cuboid this is the example of cuboid uh, now we are going to calculate the total surface area or surface area of the cuboid how we can uh, directly jump into and uh, find out the area of the cuboid we don't know anything about cuboid we only know length sorry length breadth and width that's it how we can calculate the total surface area it's not possible right so that's why we are already know about the rectangle here the rectangle is here by using those rectangle formulas we are going to find out the cuboid shapes for example while separating the cuboid it will become like this now we getting a, this is a rectangular part and this is one more thing and a four rectangular shapes and upper part and lower part are here so now in a cuboid that contains a two identical parts these two are identical and these two are identical top and bottom are identical so three identical parts are here in a cuboid so now we are going to find out the length length and breadth or area of the cuboid while we spreading the sheet and we spreading the sheet like this we get the figure like this as we know this is the height of the cuboid and this is the length and this is the breadth so i already told you this two parts are identical i name it as one and these two parts are identical i name it as two and three these parts are identical i name it as three as i said earlier the, what is the area of the rectangle that is l into b so in same way we are going to find out this rectangle first we are going to find out the rectangle 1 and this so what is the area of rectangle yeah good that is l into b but we have two rectangles here that is 1 and 1 so that is 2 into l into b the same way we have to calculate for 2 and 3 yeah. it's done so uh, you you are applying for which grade i'm applying for grade 8 i mean uh, middle school okay fine see now the thing is uh, i would like to ask you why the reason why we should hire you um i believe uh, according to i based on some research uh, about our school i believe my experience and my qualifications make me the ideal person for this position so uh, i i have as a mother uh, i have experience of 10 years which made me to attach or made me the frequency with the kids and i have a kids around me or uh, around my house at uh, a middle school age i take tuitions to them so i have more frequency in the middle school range they are the teenagers who the basic values can be inculcated easily and See, i uh, i believe my qualifications suit them well okay second have you mentioned about taking tuitions in your resume no ma'am no not it yeah you mentioned that It's not that that's, absolutely, that's okay. absolutely fine but you can you you can do that as well the reason i'm telling you is see although you have experience of 10 years right but uh, do, uh, how how many years gap do you have in between of not teaching no no not on having 10 years of tuition experience i have just 2 years of tuition experience i'm how 2 years of teaching experience before uh, 10 years after marry like got Two years of teaching experience you have, right? And and yes. how many years of tuition experience? Two years. Yeah, two years two. Of, uh, okay, fine. So what you can you can mention that in your resume as well because see, uh, what the school does, you know, it's the criteria of school. They take experienced teacher, yes. right? If there will be any experienced teacher, so in your interview, your interview has to be so accurate that the uh who say is conducting an interview is profound to take you in an interview because they will be having several resumes right during february and march the many schools they, they take out vacancies right and they have several resumes but their more main focus is on experienced teacher right so uh, while uh, you have your interview the hr will ask you why we should hire you just tell them although i do not have experience but ma'am i am i have the required skills first don't uh, don't talk about your child or something like that just i said uh, give precise okay. answer so although although i do not have any experience but i have the required skills okay. right i only need the platform 
where i'll get an opportunity to showcase my skills this is an accurate answer to your question okay in that case you are telling the hr see i have the talent i have the required skills i only require platform which is your school right i only require platform to give me an opportunity to showcase my skills and you're also telling them beforehand that you are not experienced you have no experience of teaching in at school in at school but you all have the required skills and you also take home tuitions okay right and in this interview you also have to talk about several methodologies tricks you know in math in mathematics several tricks are required right so say ma'am although since i am taking tuitions of middle school students at home i know several tip trips and uh, tricks which is followed which i can give to the students which can make their maths easier because there are uh, as according to uh, american psychiatric association it is told that uh, in com compare compared to boys uh, in compared to girls boys are more accurate in maths right it has been proved yeah. but what we can do is i can apply several uh, tips and tricks which will make it easier for even girls to solve the problem in a easier way right yeah because the your interview is going really well everything is good the only the drawback is do not have experience whereas for middle school students uh, the what the school does they take experienced teacher more so your interview has to be so impactful that you know they can give a second thought no matter she uh, mrs mr ramya she does not have any experience no matter she has no experience but still her teaching is very accurate okay. right yeah so just one one thing i'm uh, afraid about that is you do not have experience but i can give you surety since your interview you are very confident enough the very first thing and second is do tell them in the interview that ma'am although may uh, make eye contact and tell them ma'am although i have no experience to be really frank i have no experience in teaching at school but i have the required skills and i am in need of the platform where i'll get an opportunity to showcase my skill even an even a non experienced teacher needs a platform right how will you be experienced you'll only be experienced if you if you will get a platform to showcase your skills right so ma'am just tell them that so that just because they are if even if they don't give you eighth standard at least they will give you fourth standard generally what happens at school even i have worked at school for 6 to 7 years so what happens is i was uh, i was counselor at that point of time at a convent school so what they did is earlier they took some uh, what we used to do we used to take teachers who have no experience even if they are applying for 9th uh, and 10th standard we used to give them 4th and 5th standard just to check their skills right after okay. one year if you get to know that they have the skills then we give them 9th to 10th standard okay but only to those teachers who have no experience but have the qualities they possess the qualities okay right so that school they might they might might do this with you as well okay right okay, sure. so be confident and i think they'll only ask you regarding the subject they'll ask you about uh, introduction which is fairly good right the only thing is you have to be really slow when you answer the questions you don't have to run okay right you have to keep that in mind that smile on face and be really slow that hesitation that afraidness should not show should not be reflected on your face okay right i know that you are in need of the job you want to apply for the job at, but at the at the same point of time the hr should not know that right okay. Okay. so give your interview in such a manner in a very relaxed state right because see no one can stop you to achieve your goal because you already have that quality right okay. the only problem uh, is that you have no experience in that yes. case when when they ask you at the end just tell ma'am i have no experience really frank i have no experience but even experienced candidate needs a platform to be experienced right just speak less speak slowly and speak in such a way that the hr is like hr hum, no matter how many people are sitting on the panel who are conducting the interview they are forced to give a thought second thought to you as well that yeah yeah this thing she spoke correct even even if she wants to be experienced we have to give her a chance at least right so do speak this in interview any any teacher who has no experience but who has the skills i always tell her to do mention this word that although i have no experience but even any teacher who wants to be an experienced teacher needs a platform just like me okay. right and if you will provide me such platform i will also be highly obliged to you that's it okay right 